On this edition of MC Jim Kim, Paper Chromatography. In this lab, we are looking at a way to separate a mixture using chromatography. The separation of the mixture depends on the properties of the substance that it contains. There are two components of chromatography. One is the stationary phase, which contains the mixture or substance that needs to be separated and the second is the mobile phase, which is the solvent used to move through the stationary phase and carry the components of the mixture. Today, we are looking at paper chromatography, where paper is the stationary phase. In paper chromatography, the movement depends on the substance interactions with the stationary phase. Here, you will see a diagram showing the initial and final stages of paper chromatography. In the initial phase, the mixtures have been added to the origin line and placed in a solvent. In the final phase, the solvent has moved up the paper, bringing the mixtures with it. The distance each substance travels is measured in centimeters. This data is then used to calculate the RF value, which is the distance traveled by the sample component divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. RF is unitless. In this lab, you will need a solvent, known dyes and unknown dyes provided by your instructor, toothpicks, a stapler, a spot tray, a piece of chromatography paper, a petri dish, a 250 milliliter beaker, a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, a ruler, a pencil, and of course, don't forget your goggles. To begin, lay your chromatography paper so that it is curved downward. Using a pencil, Draw a line one centimeter from the bottom. This will be called the origin. Draw a line 1.5 centimeters from the top and sides. The top line will be called the top margin. Label the origin line with the dyes provided. Using a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, measure seven milliliters of your solvent and carefully transfer to a 250 milliliter beaker. Cover the beaker with a Petri dish. Using a spot tray, label each well with the specific dye and transfer a drop of each dye into the corresponding well. Using a different toothpick for each dye, spot each dye into the corresponding spot on your chromatography paper. Once you are finished spotting, roll your paper and staple the edges together. Make sure you do not overlap the edges. Place your chromatography paper into your 250 milliliter beaker, which contains your solvent, and place the Petri dish on top. Be careful not to swish the solvent around once your paper is in the beaker. Wait for the solvent to reach your top margin. Once this happens, remove the paper from the beaker, unstaple it, and allow for it to dry on a paper towel. Your solvent will run up over the top margin. Draw a line where this ends. This is your solvent front. Make sure to do this before your paper has completely dried. Next, you will measure the RF value of each mixture. For example, let's measure the B2 mixture. To measure RF, you will make an oval around the mixture of where it traveled. Place a dot in the middle of the oval you drew. For reference, this top line is the solvent front. Now we can measure for RF. Measure from the origin to the middle of the oval. This is the distance traveled by the sample. The value for this is 1.85 centimeters. Next, measure from the origin to the solvent front. This is the distance traveled by the solvent. The value for this is 6.29 centimeters. You will divide these two and your answer will be 0.294. Your answer should have the correct number of significant digits and should be unitless. 
This is because when you divide centimeters by centimeters, they will cancel out and you will be left with no units. Do this same calculation for all mixtures present on your origin line. Make sure to record these values in your lab notebook.